Okay, so the goal for this assignment is twofold. We've been working with systems of linear equations and augmented matrices and using elementary row operations to take the augmented matrix and be able to write it in its equivalent reduced row echelon form. And then we can infer something about the solution set after we've written the augmented matrix in this special form. Um, so the goal for this Python lab is gonna be um, twofold. First of all, how can we typeset systems of linear equations and matrices nicely in a markdown cell like this? So how can I format math in these text boxes in this CoLab document? And secondly, how can I add text, um, excuse me, how can I add code blocks and execute run that code in CoLab? So that's the goal for this assignment. So right now you are working with Google Colab um, and this is really like a Jupyter type of environment um, to, to work in. So what Google Colab allows you to do is run execute Python code. Um, and typically you would need to have a lot of software installed to run Python. All of this is housed on servers for Google. Okay, so Google is housing um, your, your Python installation. So that means it's free. You don't need to purchase anything to run Python. You don't need to install anything on your computer to run Python. And that's the nice advantage about using um, Google, Google Colab. Okay, so um, before getting into the Python coding side of things, let's first just talk about the entering text and math equations into a Colab document. So when we want to typeset formulas, you may have written up things like using Microsoft Word document where there's an equation editor and you can click on different buttons to format equations in different ways. In Google Colab, there's no format um, editor for equations. Rather, we're going to enter in the um, equations using what is called LaTeX. So this is pronounced LaTeX as a, um, some people pronounce it LaTeX, um, either way. So there are two different types of equations that we could set in Colab. Um, one of them would be like an inline um, equation. So that would be like if I'm typing stuff and I want this equation to appear in the same line, um, that's called inline LaTeX. And secondly, sometimes when we have bigger blocks of math or if the formulas look more complicated, we might want to typeset it off from the rest of the text and kind of center it in the middle of the page. And that's what I'll call this display style um, for, for LaTeX. And so up top, you can see what the output would look like. And down below, you can see what the raw LaTeX looks like. Um, recall, you can always see the raw code by double clicking on this text cell. So I just double clicked on that text cell. I can see my header over here. I can see um, my bullets over here. And um, on the right, I can see what it looks like when it's displayed. So again, here is the formula as it's displayed. And over here is the formula as I've entered it in LaTeX. And so I would, we begin entering formulas with a dollar sign, and then you type the LaTeX code, and then um, Colab is going to know your equation is done when you end it with another dollar sign. So whatever I input between these two dollar signs, that's going to be formatted using LaTeX. And you can see here, I have 4x sub 1 squared. And that looks like a 4x. This underscore made this a subscript. And this caret made this a superscript. So this puts it like as an exponent, and this puts a subscript, which is going to denote um, x1 variable. Um, otherwise, you know, if I want the symbol pi to appear, notice here I type the backslash symbol followed by pi to get pi. Um, if I want something to appear under a square root, I type backslash sqrt. Um, and then in curly brackets, I put the expression, this is moving stuff, I put the expression that I want to appear under the square root. So I want 
four times e raised to the x2 power under the square root, then I would put that in curly brackets um, in, next to the square root. Um, if I wanted to make this appear inline, or excuse me, um, display style, like over here, the code doesn't change. So the actual formula that I entered doesn't change. The only difference is now I have two dollar signs. Then I enter my stuff. And um, then I end that block with another two dollar sign. So over here on the right, you can see what the equation looks like. And down below, you can see what the code looks like. Um, so it takes a little bit of experimenting um, and practice to, um, to get a feel for LaTeX. But once you start to get some fluency with it, you will really start to love LaTeX. And you're going to want to use it every place that you see it. Um, and there's tons and tons of things that you can do in LaTeX. So um, I would recommend kind of bookmarking the following link over there in that Google Colab, which has a whole dictionary of any sort of math symbol that you might want to enter. How could you enter that in LaTeX? And pretty much the convention is to write a backslash and then um, write out something that kind of describes what the symbol is. Um, these might not be the most useful ones, but we use a lot of Greek symbols. Um, you can see those over here. And I think probably what is most useful are some of the functions. Ah, here they are. Um, so all of these functions over here, like cosine, exponents, and, and so on. Um, if you do have any trouble figuring out how to do something in LaTeX, um, I'll just say that this is a very, very widely used um, throughout the, the math, STEM, science community, community. There's help boards everywhere. So if you have a question on how to do something, just type it into a search engine, like type it into a Google, and you'll find that somebody else out there had the same question, and probably you could find your answer um, out there already. Um, okay, so that's kind of the basics of entering formula. The main thing you want to keep in mind is um, that you're using single dollar signs for inline LaTeX and double dollar signs um, when you want to have the display style in the middle of the page. And here are, are just some um, comments about the code that was above, about superscripts and, and subscripts. And here's this link that will take you to um, all of those, that big dictionary of, of symbols. So what we're mainly going to be working with this semester are systems of linear equations, matrices, and vectors. So let's talk about how we can enter systems of equations and matrices in LaTeX. So when we are going to be entering systems of equations, one useful way of doing this is using what's called the array environment. So um, down here, you can see the code and um, that corresponds to the code that the system of equations that was typeset way up here. Okay, so if you're curious, how did I get this set of equations over here, that code is over here. So let me double click on this. And now I can edit it. So, um, um, and one kind of subtle thing to note here is that when I start with these three apostrophes and end with these three apostrophes, that means rather than actually compile the LaTeX code, it's just going to display the code as I type it. And if I want to actually display the code, well, then I could either, you know, delete these or I can just paste another copy over here. So here's the LaTeX code that gave me this system of equations here. So we, I did it with math mode. So that's why I have these two dollar signs here. And then I take a backslash begin array environment. So in curly brackets, we have array. And then I'm going to indicate next how many columns are in my array and how are those columns aligned? So the way I've set up this system over here, I just have one column of, um, in my array. And that column is aligned to the left. So you can see these equations that are displayed on the right, they are all lined up 
on the left side over here, but they are not aligned on the right side. So they all start at the same position on the left. They don't necessarily end at the same position on the right. So I just have one column. So each of these lines here cars corresponds to one of those equations. So highlighted in blue is how I got this top equation to display over here. And once I'm done with that row of my array, and keep in mind, I just have one column in this array, when I'm ready to go to the next equation, I put double backslashes here. Um, if there's a space or not, um, that doesn't make any difference. And then I go to my next equation and I type that out in LaTeX and you can see what that looks like over here. A double backslash to end that row of the array. I go to my third equation, my fourth equation. Now this is my last row of the array. So I don't need to put the double backslash here. Um, if I do, that, that's not gonna have any effect on the display that you can see on the right. But it's worth pointing that as I change things in my LaTeX code, you can see on the right, that's getting updated right away in the text cell. But this I had as a six. Um, so for the last row, you don't need to end it. Instead, you can just end the array environment. So I have backslash end array and then double dollar signs. And I just moved one of them and you can see that the code gets all screwed up. I want my double dollar sign over here. And so sometimes it's real easy to, you know, mistype things. And, um, you know, if instead of typing end array with two R's, I misspelled it. Um, it's pretty easy to spot LaTeX errors because the equations are gonna um, not display as you expect. <clears throat> okay, so that's one way of setting up a system of linear equations, very simply, I can set up an array where I have one column and I can choose how I want to align things, left, center, right. Um, this is a formatting issue. Uh, I'll leave that for you to decide what you think is most aesthetically pleasing to you. Um, but to see what it might look like if you had multiple columns, uh, over here is the same system of equations that I've set up using an array environment, but now this array environment has three different columns. First column is all of the stuff to the left is the left side of each equation. And I'm gonna, I decided in this case to align things to the right. So that you can see all of these X4s are lined up on the right. Okay, so this is my first column in the array. My next column are the equal signs, and I want to center all of those, for example. So those are all centered with each other. And then I have a third column, which I'm aligning to the left. Um, and that you can see by all of these values over here being aligned on the left side of things, as opposed to on the right. And when you're entering, your equations over here, the way that we note that one column is ending and now the stuff that I'm entering is gonna be in the next column in the same row is by using these ampersand symbols, the and symbol. So here I type the left side of my equation. I typed the ampersand um, that ends this first column. Then I have my middle column, which was an equal sign. Now I end that column, and then I have my last column, which is left aligned, which is the constant on the right side of the equation. That equation is done, double lines to end that, and now we can start the next row of our array, our next equation that also has the left side entered ampersand, middle column ampersand, and then the constant on the right side, and then we end that. So here's just another way of setting up the same system of equations, just aligned differently. And so what's really nice about LaTeX is that we can change, we can customize things just by typing things on the keyboard. And we don't have to scroll around and go to like a, a format editor and click on buttons. So if I decide I want everything centered, I could just do that. Okay, now my equations are centered over here. You might say, okay, Maybe you don't like that. I would prefer to be centered on the left. And so 
we can make all of these changes really quickly um, just by typing things with our keyboard. So um, very customizable. Uh, so I would encourage you to just play around with the latte code as you see fit. But to enter equations, systems of equations, we're going to use the array environment is a really common way of doing that. Next, let's talk about how we could enter um, matrices and vectors in um, using LaTeX. And so this is going to be similar to how we um, set up the array environment for um, the system of equations that we wanted to enter in the previous block. Um, so here's the text that you can see in its kind of polished form, but I'm going to double click on it so you can see how I actually entered the LaTeX code in here. So remember for vectors, we want to denote these differently than scalars and, and matrices. So vectors we denote either in bold font or we denote um, using the arrow um, superscript above it. <clears throat> so if I want to get a bold X like I have over here, then you can see the code is dollar sign begins LaTeX and then the command is backslash math BF. That stands for math um, bold font. And then inside curly brackets, I'm gonna type whatever I want to appear in bold. So in this case, X. If I wanna have a bolded B, then I would do dollar sign backslash math bold font in curly brackets B. And feel free to, to play around with this code um, to see how tweaking things um, affects what appears over on the right side of the text. Um, if you prefer to use the arrow notation like we have over here, um, so if you want an X with an arrow above it or a B with a little arrow above it, then rather than use math bold font, you're gonna use backslash VEC for vector. And then again, inside curly, brackets, braces, you're going to just write the um, symbols that you want to appear underneath the arrow. So in this case, I want an X underneath the arrow. If I want to get a B with a little arrow above it, then I do VEC B and out comes the B over here. So this is how we would type the notation to denote that X or B is a vector, bold font or with the vector above it. So I don't care which way you um, indicate vectors, bold font or arrows, um, but I do, if you are working with a vector, you have to use one of those because we wanna be really clear that it's not a scalar. Okay, so um, let's say I've got a column vector B that has um, these four entries in it. So as you hopefully have noted, our textbook tends to put um, vectors and matrices inside of square brackets like this. Um, and other texts might use um, parentheses uh, around their vectors and matrices. So both are, are commonly used, but I'm gonna typeset vectors and matrices using square brackets because that's how our textbook does it. So if I wanted to get this to appear in the text box, first of all, I want the B to appear. So um, I'm going to use this in display style because this is big and I want it to appear in the middle of the page. Um, I've got my math um, bold font B over here. So that gives me the bold faced B that we have over here. Uh, I have my equal sign that comes over here. And now I want to begin my vector. So we're going to begin that using what's called the B matrix environment in LaTeX. So we begin this environment by saying backslash begin. And then in curly braces, we indicate the environment that we want to begin. So I want to begin a matrix with brackets around it. That's what the B matrix stands for. So this is bracketed matrix. So whatever array I enter next is going to appear between square brackets. Um, after that, it works very similar to that array environment that we used um, for the equations. Um, so I could have multiple columns if I want, and those columns we're going to separate with ampersand symbols, 
since I have just a column vector here, I only have one column in each row. And we're going to end each row with the double backslash. And then we close off the environment with a uh, backslash ends, and then in um, curly braces, the B matrix environment. So in this case, the first entry in this column vector was 18 and that row. The next row contains just the single number minus five. We end that, then the single number 34, and then six. And since this is our last row, I don't need the double backslash here. Um, I can instead just end the B matrix environment. Um, so that's how we would enter a vector um, using the B matrix environment. Um, if instead of using square brackets, you prefer using rounded parentheses, um, and this is also pretty commonly used, then um, the only difference is rather than use B matrix, you're going to use P matrix. Um, the B matrix stands for bracketed matrix. The P matrix stands for um, parenthesis matrix. And this is generally how the logic works in LaTeX for naming convention. Um, you know, they use an abbreviation. Um, instead of typing out parenthesis matrix, they'll try and make this a little bit simpler because when you're entering LaTeX, you're, you're typing things from the keyboard. Um, so just be aware, I'll be using B matrix to get these bracketed vectors and parentheses, but you're welcome to use P matrix if that's what you prefer. So that's how um, vectors work. Uh, matrices work very much the same way, except um, instead of having just one column, you have um, multiple columns. So we um, center this in the middle of the page um, using the display style, which would be like the double dollar signs. We begin B matrix, same way. And now each time, so we kind of work from left to right across each row. And each time I want to indicate that this column has ended and the next thing goes in the next column, we type in ampersand. Um, so this is the first column. This is the second column. This is the third column. This is the fourth column. This is the fifth column. And that ends the line. So these are column one, two, three, four, the fifth column. Um, the 18 completes that row of the matrix. So we put double dollar sign, and then we can begin the next row of the matrix. So we do this for each row. Um, and then when things are done, we um, end the B matrix environment, and then we end the display style with a double dollar sign. Um, so here I just clicked on this so you can see the code over here that led to this matrix over here. Um, and if you want to add another column, then you can just do things like this. And you can see it added a one over here, and there weren't any entries down below here. And um, with the B matrix environment, it's, a, it's a, an array environment. And um, the default here is that all of your entries are going to be centered. So you don't need to specify how each column is going to be aligned. The B matrix by default is going to align every, every column in the center. OK, so um, that ends the little tutorial about entering text and LaTeX into um, a Google Colab document. Um, so just to kind of go through this um, carefully, if you want to add your own text block to the document, you can. Just go up here and click the, the plus text, and it's going to add this little block over here. And then you could add your own header to it. So if I want something at the header three level, I could type three hashtags and say, this is my uh, header three. And you can see that inserts this into the table of contents. If you wanted it at the header level two, then you put two of those, that's going to, ah, OK, there it is. Now my header moved over to level two. So sometimes I see, I may need to click off of that text block before I see that change reflected. Um, but if you want to change the header level again, it's just putting some of these tags over here. And if you want to add a bullet, there are two ways that you can do it. You can do it with uh, asterisk here.
you can see that appears on as a bullet, or you can use a dash um, that also will give you a bullet. So either way you want to do it, that's great. Otherwise, um, if you don't want bulleted stuff, you could just type whatever you want. And um, if you want to add a matrix, again, you would hit double dollar sign, B matrix, uh, excuse me, begin B matrix. And then you can create a matrix uh, that's any size that contain whose elements are anything. So you don't have to be numbers. So here's a little uh, two by two matrix that I'll set up. And um, here you can check your LaTeX code is on the right and you can see the, um, the output of that LaTeX code appears, excuse me, the LaTeX code is on the left and the output of your LaTeX code will appear formatted on, on the right. Um, so you're welcome to add your own blocks if you want. If you wanna move them around, these arrows will, will flip the location. So if I wanna move this block and before the previous one, just hit this to move the cell up or down. Um, I'm going to just delete this because there's nothing all that interesting in here. Um, okay, so this kind of concludes the, the LaTeX part of the assignment, or at least the background for it. And so one of the questions at the end of this assignment is going to ask you to enter some stuff in LaTeX.